Welcome to the first page, our video series featuring Thomas C. Foster, author of How to Read Literature Like a Professor. With Professor Foster as our guide, discover that the first page, the first paragraph, even sometimes the first sentence of a novel, is the key for what is to come. The opening provides up to 18 important clues to the rest of the novel. Things like style, tone, mood, narrative identity and attitude, theme, and point of view are all here. So watch carefully as Foster delves into the first page of such HarperCollins classroom favorites as To Kill a Mockingbird, Their Eyes Were Watching God, and The Bean Trees. The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho. Hello again, and welcome. One of the hardest things for a lot of us is simplicity. We do complexity really well. We're educated to handle it. We teach ourselves that nothing is simple, that everything that seems so is merely hiding its complexity. As a result, we generally make things more difficult than they need to be. We reach a point in our development where no writing challenge is quite as great as composing a simple declarative sentence. Even reading simple language can be a challenge. Can we trust it? Is this some sneaky game to trick us into relaxing? And sometimes it is, but not always. Consider the following paragraph from Paulo Coelho's The Alchemist. The boy's name was Santiago. Dusk was falling as the boy arrived with his herd at an abandoned church. The roof had fallen in long ago, and an enormous sycamore had grown on the spot where the sacristy had once stood. You can't get much more basic than that. Take the first sentence, the boy's name was Santiago. Not exactly the announcement of a grand style. Not exactly a grabber as first sentences go. It is a plain statement of fact. At the same time, it is busy. At its end, we know gender, age, roughly, and name. By the end of the paragraph, we know the setting in terms of an immediate locale, the time of day, the ambiance of the place, and maybe just a hint of the problem that this little story will address. What does it mean to tell us that this is a place where churches fall into disuse? Our reader's detector immediately begins sweeping the scene for further clues. Is this a theme? Is this the start of a pattern? Perhaps more importantly, what does the style tell us about the novel's intent? What for instance, should we make of the word animals rather than sheep, as they are later revealed to be? Should we be paying attention to the generic nature of the narration? There are details, but not very specific or individual ones. The boy has a name, but not a lot else in the first page or so. A book, unnamed. A herd, rather than the more conventional flock, but nothing very individuated about it. Does that mean something? So, in the first paragraphs of this story, we receive more questions than answers, but also a lot of hints. The main hint, I find, is the suggestion that we're in the realm not of realistic fiction, but of the instructive tale, fable, parable, allegory, homily, fairy tale. Nearly all of them make the story subservient to the larger ethical purpose. That makes sense. If you want to convey a message, it will hardly do to have the storytelling get in the way. This tale, like most hero journeys, has a lesson to impart. We follow the wanderings of Santiago as he seeks to fulfill his personal legend, not so much because he is splendidly singular as because he is representative of a universal principle. The simplicity and comparative impersonality of that opening tell us what to expect what to watch for in the rest of the book. It teaches us, in short, how to read the novel we have just opened. You can't hope for much more help than that. For more information about the first page, please visit www.harperacademic.com.